Hi, class. Let's look at these two words, hypertrophy and atrophy. We spoke about this in some of my earlier videos. We said that if you go to the gym and you exercise and you do heavy training, you can increase the diameter of your muscle fibers. You can increase the number of myofibrils. And what's really cool is that you can go through something called mitochondrial biogenesis. We know what genesis is. It means to create. Mitochondrial biogenesis means that through training and stressing your muscles, the more muscle tissue you have, the more mitochondria you can create. The more you exercise, the more energy you can get. When you're a couch potato, you're more tired. When you're at the gym, you have more energy. The toughest part is just getting to the gym, and once you're there, you, you get lots of energy because of the mitochondrial biogenesis. If you go from someone who exercises to going to a couch potato, you could lose the number of mitochondria and you get more tired and fatigued. Okay? So the more you train, the more you exercise, the more you increase healthy muscle composition, the healthier you become. This is why BIA is so important bioelectrical impedance analysis looks at fat mass and fat free mass. We want to make sure that when you're looking at body composition, you're made up of more fat free mass, which is lean tissue, than fat mass, which is adipose. Okay. Extra resistance training, weight training is so very, very important. When you don't use it, you lose it. That's atrophy. The lack of muscle activity reduces muscle size, muscle tone, and muscle power. It atrophies. Between the age of 30 and 50, about 10% of your muscle tissue is replaced by fibrous connective tissue and fat tissue. Between the age of 50 and 80, another 40% of muscle tissue is replaced. That's why staying active your entire life is so important. You always have to move. You always have to walk. You, you know, be in a pool. If there's the resistance of water and your joints hurt, then aquatic therapy is important. Your muscle tissue needs to be active. Your body needs to stay in motion. The brain loves mobility. This is why kids love going on a swing set. The brain loves the movement of a swing. It loves a seesaw. It loves a skateboard. It loves skiing. It loves rollerblading. It loves linear acceleration, right? Any type of movement drives the brain. In order for your body to survive and for your neurology to survive, your body needs motion, it needs fuel, and it needs oxygen. Motion, fuel like glucose, and oxygen. Always keep your body in motion, okay? As people age, the muscle strength for most people <clears throat> tend to decrease, and their flexibility decreases. This is why eating fish, or fish oils with your omega-3s are so very important. It helps with the flexibility of your tissues. Reflexes tend to slow down, and the slow oxidative fiber numbers tend to increase. One of the things I do when I examine my patients, I shake their hand and I feel the back of their hand. I feel for the grip. Then I turn their hand over and I look for a few things. When they're in my reception room and they go from a seated position to a standing position, that's where the exam starts. Can they stand up on their own? Or are they pushing on the handrails? Do they push down on the hand rests 
to push their body up, or do they have enough lower extremity strength to stand on their own? Do they have enough? That's so important as people age because to maintain integrity, to maintain the integrity of the individual, they want to be able to sit on a toilet and get off by themselves. Can they sit and stand on their own? Or are they using the hand rest of the chair to push themselves up? Are they pushing down on their thighs and their knees to stand up? I want to make sure that they can stand up without any type of assistance. Then I look at their hands. I turn it over. I look at the nails. I make sure they're nice and pink. I make sure they're not white or blue. Then I look at the hands, the back of the hand, the dorsal part. These here are tendons. These are tendons. But what's between the tendons is muscle. And when you look at it, when you look at the hand, if you see hills and valleys, these depressions are where the muscle wasted away. The muscles should be nice and thick between them. So when you see this hill and then a depression and the hill and then a depression, we call that wasting of muscle or sarcopenia. Sarcopenia means wasting of muscle. You could see it in the hand. You could see it in the quadriceps strength. As people get older, they should be able to stand on their own and they should be able to walk five to six steps, stop and turn on a dime, turn around and walk back. Many people have to take shuffling steps to make that turn. When they're taking shuffling steps to turn around, we have a problem. We look for the smoothness of the movement without losing their balance. And you will find that there tends to be a connection between balance and the heart. And we know that when people lose their balance and they fall, mortality rates, right? People are usually dead within two to three months after the fall, okay? Balance, the part of the brain that regulates balance also regulates the rate and rhythm of the heart. So we always see when people are on heart medications and they're manipulating the physiology of the heart, we'll often find balance issues. I then use an instrument called a dynamometer to measure the strength of the hand. And what happens is there's a needle, a thick needle, and then there's a thin needle here. The knob, you turn the needle to zero, they squeeze it, and then the fat needle moves up. And when you let go, the thin needle is the marker that designates the highest and strongest part of the squeeze. The fat needle can go back to zero, but the thin needle marks the high point that the needle actually moved to. And we can check symmetry of left hand to right hand. Just to give you an idea, when I first started this in my office, when I first started my practice, I think I was at 100 pounds of crushing force myself. I could move it to 100. And as of the other day, my hand strength increased with 27 years of working with patients and doing manual adjusting skills that I can get to 100 pounds of crushing force with my hands. Pretty cool. Okay. All right. Need information. We hope you learned a lot from this.